You know what's easily the best thing about country music? The fan base. They're so welcoming. They understand the traditions and values of country music so well. And it's why country music has stayed as pure, authentic, and fantastic throughout its entire lifespan. And as you can tell, I'm lying. Of course I'm lying. <laughs> country music has an awful fan base. Let's be real here. And I'm not gonna act like that's something exclusive to this particular genre of music. Hip-hop, pop, particularly in the K-pop section, also have horrendous fan bases. But I'd argue that the sheer insanity and entertainment value of some of country music's fan base is so good that it makes other genre fan bases pale in comparison. More than any other popular genre, country music has had such a cultural divide when it comes to its fan base. And this stems from the nature of which country music stands on. Country music is a genre founded upon organic instrumentation, live performances, it's a rather conservative medium of music compared to the more progressive genres of pop and hip-hop, and that's not a dig at country or even other genres. That's just the appeal of it. If you want something that pushes the edge of what music can be, those genres are there to satisfy you. But if you want something more traditional, hypothetically, country music is there to satisfy that desire. At least for the popular genres of music out there. The problem is, country music over the past 20 years or so could not figure out what it wanted to be. Now, country music is most notorious for what's known as gatekeeping. Considering this is a rather conservative genre, that is prone to happen. People who don't want the genre to change or progress in any major way, these are what's known as traditionalists. It's why during the 2010s, they were arguably more vocal than ever, during the period widely known as the bro age of country music, where popular country music was known to just rip off whatever was trending on the top 40, whether it be hip-hop, pop, or rock. Now, there's a lot more to this, I'm really just generalizing, and I'm not gonna go into the history of this, as I've done it many times up to this point, but my main point is this. The main issue so many took was this new generation of fake country stars who could have found success in another genre anchored themselves in country music even though it was clear they didn't belong in this genre. This was this great divide I spoke about. Older fans who grew up with an idea of what country music should be versus younger fans who enjoyed it because it was something different and not quote unquote old fashioned. But as the years went on, country music got better and when the 2020s rolled around, Country music is arguably in the best state it's been in in years. With the popularity of Luke Combs, Morgan Wallen, and Zach Bryan, country music has genuinely been seeping into the overall mainstream, along with country music's core scene being fantastic as well, with acts such as Charles Wesley Godwin, Orville Peck, Billy Strings, and Coulter Wall getting major label deals. Incredible, unique acts bringing their own flavor to the genre, and Billy Strings being this huge bluegrass phenomenon. And so many artists I've complained about for years on end, dipping their toes into a more country identity. With 2023 on its way to become one of the greatest years the genre has ever seen, in my humble opinion. Country music is the popular, respected genre once again, and it seems like nothing is gonna change that. Oh wait, this is the country music fan base we're talking about. And good god, is this new trend of toxicity sprouting up somehow even dumber than the stuff I mentioned before. Everyone, say hello to Noah Khan. As you promised me that I was more than all the miles combined you must have- Noah Khan is the premier sad boy folk superstar that all the tomboy girls who wear scarves during autumn 24-7 are obsessing over. He debuted in 2019 with his album Busy Head and solely amassed a niche following until blowing up in 2022 with his album Stick Season, which was a bit of a departure from his last two records, taking a lot more influence from folk and rural concepts compared to the more psychedelic shimmery pop of the first two. And to call this album huge is a bit of an understatement. His first two records barely charted anywhere, and Stick Season was hitting number one on the rock charts, the folk charts, the self-titled track was his highest performing single since 2017. It didn't receive glowing praise, but it did receive far more noteworthy critical attention compared to his first two. Noah Khan is well on his way of becoming the king of modern folk pop music, but if you haven't guessed based on the title of the video, there are some people who aren't satisfied with that notion and think he needs to be more than that. So, and stay with me here, for some bizarre reason, 
There are those lurking around in the country music fandom that genuinely believe that Noah Khan is country. Not even, oh, this guy can make some killer country music. No, that he already does. And that Stick Season is a legit, authentic country album. Ah! There are so many issues I take with this, and I can't even begin to pick which argument to tear down first. I didn't want to talk about this because I saw, yeah, this is coming from a bunch of out of touch morons who are a vocal minority. I could sit back and watch this dumb fad fade away. But after seeing this Instagram poll on a popular country music page where the majority agreed Stick Season is one of the best things out of alt country, I knew I couldn't ignore this any longer. Now, let's get this out of the way. Where do I stand on this? Noah Khan is it is it is it country i i feel stupid that i even have to clarify this this man is a folk pop singer out of the new england area these do not equate in any large way now i know that sounds silly considering the acts i've reviewed on the channel and the people i've put high on lists before but here's the kicker with these guys not only do they have a far larger country influence than him even if they do push things in other directions a bit too far but they themselves market themselves as country music. They identify in that genre and on that merit. They are. Noah Khan doesn't even associate himself with country. He never marketed himself in the country audience. He never pushed a single of his towards country radio. He doesn't play country music oriented festivals. This man does not consider himself a country artist. And yet we have fans who do. You thought I was kidding with how stupid the fan base is right now. Boy oh boy, don't you feel stupid. Over a lot of the discourse I've witnessed and interacted in, three arguments have come up the most. Number one, the fact he uses instruments used in country music. Number two, he matches a lot of the culture country music has. And three, which is my favorite one, genre is a spectrum. Now, I'm gonna go through each and every one of these arguments and point out the hilarious stupidity of it all. So as for the first one, pertaining to the fact Noah uses instruments such as banjo, mandolin, and violin, and yes, I'm saying violin, not fiddle, it'll all make sense later. This means he should at least be in the discussion of country music, and... Um... No? Now, look, I get the argument on paper. The dude uses a lot of these instruments that are generally integral to country's identity. There's a reason, especially in Texas, where if you don't have a fiddle and steel in the band, uh, what, what are you doing? Get out of here. But look at the one word, fiddle. Now, to the uninitiated, fiddle isn't its own unique instrument. It's a violin. Talk to any musicologist and they'll tell you there is no difference between the instruments. The difference comes in how they're played, how the musicians phrase and attack their notes, and this is a perfect metaphor for Noah and his musical ensemble. The way these instruments are utilized in this album are not utilized in ways associated with country music. These are more modern folk-driven pop phrasings. The mandolin on his album doesn't utilize the rhythms of country music standards and opts for a more upbeat pop approach on All My Love. And that's only when the instruments aren't drowned out by the reverbed synths that takes up so much of this album's musical climaxes. Like Lingua Ignota has the same instruments Noah Khan does, but I want you to look me in the eyes and tell me this is country. So no. While Noah uses instruments often used in country, they're used in very minimal ways that draw a stark contrast to how they're used in contemporary country, let alone traditional. The next argument is that Noah embodies country culture. Now, out of all the arguments I've seen, if any of them have a kernel of merit to them, it's this one. So Stick Season is an album built up by its rural culture. Not southern, but rather northeastern. With the most obvious being orange juice and northern attitude, now I'm not gonna say country music is southern only, that's silly, but given the upbringing of Noah and the stories he weaves on this album, while I won't pompously strike this argument down, there's just not enough in relation to country culture to really say this definitively proves he is country. This is more of a northern suburban culture, which is fine, but it's not southern family by Dave Cobb. Different compelling strokes, but different all the same. And now for the last one, 
Oh, ho, 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 ho. genre is a spectrum. Just really let that one sink in. I've had so many people defend Noah Khan as country because genre is a quote unquote spectrum. And we should include Noah solely off of the fact he is folk. Now, um, pardon my French. Are you fucking stupid? Genre is a spectrum, yes. But when it comes to a genre like country music, that spectrum is razor thin. Compared to how much pop, hip hop, and R&B intersect, the spectrum of country generally ends with bluegrass and parts of Americana. Anything beyond that really isn't country. And considering the guy who makes grandiose folk pop is just as silly as saying Dan and Che are country. Based off that logic, J.C. Bach and Kendrick Lamar are in the same genre because it's a spectrum. George Strait and Black Pink are in the same genre because it's a spectrum. Are you now seeing the idiocy of this argument? Now yes, these are drastic examples, but equating this... To this... Just feels really dumb all the same. And the more and more I see this, I, I gotta wonder, how in the effing world did this all happen? Why are all these people considering this man, of all people, country? And I gotta say, I think I found the problem. It's Zach Bryan's fault. No, 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 stay with me here. Now, it's not really Zach Bryan's fault, but more of a symptom of him. Zach Bryan's success contributed to a lot of new fans into the genre, primarily that folk rock young crowd that seems to be getting larger and larger these days. Look at the two most successful songs off American Heartbreak, Something in the Orange and From Austin. These are the only two songs not produced by Eddie Spear. These two songs were produced by Ryan Hadlock, the producer for the Lumineers. Both songs charted quite high on the folk and rock charts. That's not a coincidence. With Something in the Orange particularly being the breakout crossover hit with that particular audience bringing them into the country scene. So now, we've reached my hypothetical. What I think is going on is that you have a bunch of young folk rock lovers entering country music and being rather turned off by what the genre is actually like. The rowdy fiddlers, the southern culture, the crying steel guitars, and a lot of them have concluded that popular and indie country music is just not for them. And that's fine, not everyone is gonna like country music, I've had several encounters with people that don't that are respectful. But instead of just doing the mature thing and politely saying, this isn't for me, we have a bunch of people trying to look hip and cool by saying they like country music, by disguising a bunch of artists they already listen to as country. So they never have to touch an actual country artist ever. And this just does so much damage to the reputation of country music. We fought for tooth and nail to get to the point where we are at. And to have this new fan base come in and try to distort what so many honest to god country fans and artists have achieved would cheapen what we've built. Because under this logic, the Lumineers are country music. Richie Mitch and the Coal Miners are country music. The motherfucking Mumford and Sons are apparently country. And that's not just out of touch with what country music is, it's actively insulting to the values and identity the genre has. And ultimately, insulting to the identity of Noah Khan and folk music. These are not legit country fans, who most likely just like one artist who don't want to be caught dead listening to a crying steel guitar. Now, I know a lot of people are going to point to this new song Noah dropped a few months ago called Dial Drunk, and I gotta say, now we got a debate here. The banjo is more lively in a bluegrass pop sort of way. There's some alt country chords in this one. So maybe this is Noah going country. Except no, no it isn't. Now, would I have a problem with this being pushed on country radio? No, no I wouldn't. But even after its incredible breakout success, Dial Drunk is being pushed only on folk and rock radio. They could have pushed it as country and probably be welcomed with open arms, but Noah stood firm in the genre he belongs in, which is folk pop. And it's not like he doesn't have respect for the genre, he put out a very respectful cover of If We Were Vampires. Him and Charles Wesley Godwin respect each other's works of art. And my main point, it's because of the fact he doesn't consider himself country that he has such respect for the genre. He understands what he is and what he isn't. 
And I haven't even talked about my personal feelings on Noah. I think he's very good. His writing has so much depth to it. His voice feels like a more refined and mature Ian Munsick. And personally, I like Stick Season. It was a pretty good 7 out of 10 album. I know it, and he knows it isn't country. And as for whether or not I want him to be a part of it, sure, why the hell not? But if he does, I want him to make country music. Look at Big Thief's last album. Here we have another indie folk album, but this is one that has actual country songs. We have songs using country chord structures. We have fiddle playing here. But they still consider their album folk all the same. So if this incredible indie folk band can do it, I think Noah can too if he puts his mind to it. And he seems to grasp what it takes to be a country song. But at the end of the day, that's his choice and his choice alone. We shouldn't pressure him to be something he's not and absolutely should not try to claim he is something he isn't. Why can't Noah Khan be Noah Khan? Why can't a super popular folk pop artist just be a folk pop artist? And it really points out such a delicious irony compared to what it was like 10 years ago. With the problem being fans complaining about an artist pretending to be something he isn't, to the problem now being fans pretending an artist is something he isn't.